like to um, introduce uh, to everybody this evening uh, Ben Avery from the Ross County Health Department. He's here tonight to uh, give a presentation and, and give us some information uh, about the health district this evening. Thank you very much for being here, Ben. You're welcome. Um, President Arnold, members of the council, I appreciate the opportunity to speak to you tonight in favor of the health, the health levy. Um, the vote's on May 2nd. That's just a week from tomorrow. So we're really getting down to crunch time. Um, my name's Ben Avery. Like President Arnold said, I'm the new administrator for the Ross County Health District. Um, and at the Health District, we have a vision to positively impact every citizen in Ross County. And we do this through a number of different programs. Uh, we have a WIC program that looks on nutritional needs for uh, pregnant mothers and infants. Uh, we have a maternal child health program. Uh, one aspect of that program is uh, Baby and Me Tobacco Free, where we help um, pregnant mothers quit smoking. And then once they have their children, we have incentive-based programs that uh, encourage them to stay smoke-free. There's also a crib for kids portion in that program. So we're dealing with safe sleep education. And also, we're able to get uh, new mothers' cribs uh, to encourage that safe sleep. We have BCMH at the Health District. And this is a program that works with children with medical handicaps, helps link them to needed services in the community, uh, needed health services. Our uh, injury prevention program is a grant through the Ohio Department of Health where our coordinator is able to work with local physicians um, and help them with prescribing guidelines to only prescribe as many opiates or what is needed for that injury. Um, the evidence shows that there's a direct correlation between the number of opiates that are prescribed in the community and their addiction rates. So keeping that in mind, uh, we're allocating resources to that program. Uh, we all also have a, our VFC program is uh, vaccines for children. Uh, the school age children are required to have a number of vaccines and they can get those at the health district. And in fact, there's a lot of doctors in the area that don't carry a lot of these vaccines because they know they can come to the Ross County Health District and get vaccinated. We do outreach clinics, multiple out outreach flu clinics in the city where uh, folks can come in and get a flu vaccine. We also have these clinics in every township in the county. So we can build that wall of immunity in the community and protect those folks that can't get vaccinated. There's also your more standard environmental uh, <coughs> programs that we run. Our food safety programs. Uh, we, we license 350 grocery stores and restaurants in the county. And we're in a majority of those facilities at least twice a year and more often, uh, if necessary, if follow-up is required. Um, our sewage treatment system program makes sure that new sewage treatment systems get installed properly, um, that they function for a long period of time, and uh, we also work with older systems. If they're failing, we, we try to work with homeowners to find solutions. Uh, the health district has uh, partnered with the Ross County Commissioners for our WPCLF grant, and this helps low to moderate income individuals fix their failing sewage treatment system. In a lot of cases, it will pay for 100% of the costs. So you can hear a common theme here tonight is that the health district, it brings in a lot of grant money to the county. Um, it wasn't long ago you could look at our financial statements and see that for every dollar in levy funds that we brought in, uh, we brought in an additional $4 in grant programs. So there's an economic argument to be made for supporting the health district. Uh, I'm sure you're all well aware now at this point that all these programs won't go away if this levy fails. There's an alternative funding mechanism for the health district, and that is to come to the city and the townships for inside millage uh, to support mandated health district programs if our levy fails. Um, I know the city has not budgeted for this, and many of our townships cannot afford um, to support the types of programs that we have now underneath this levy. So if we were to have to go to that alternative funding mechanism, um, some of these grant programs would have to go. Um, and we would have to be a lot more selective about uh, what, we, what programs we operated at the health district. When 
when I'm in the community, a couple things I hear a lot is I had no idea how many different programs you ran in front of the health district. And I fully admit that we can do a better job of getting out uh, and speaking to the public about that. And that's something that we're going to make a priority going forward. Uh, the next thing they want to know is how much is this going to cost? How much would this levy cost if I support it? <coughs> the answer to that question is for every $100,000 of assessed property value, a homeowner will have to pay $2.92 a month to support this levy. And it's important to note that that's assessed property value. That's typically much less than your appraised value. Um, as a matter of fact, I was on the auditor's site today and it can be as low as 35% of the appraisal value. So for many folks in this county, uh, choosing to support this levy could be very similar to the decision to buy a bottle of water a month. Uh, this is a one mill levy that we are uh, running next Tuesday. We have operated on a one mill levy since 1992. So this is not a new tax. Unfortunately, it's important for me to make it clear that the ballot language, um, when you're in, at the poll, is going to call this an additional levy. The reason we have to use that language is because our previous levy expired. Uh, so you will see additional levy. With a vote for this measure, uh, will restore the fun same funding level that we've been operating on since 1992. I think the last point I wanted to make was that um, two weeks ago, the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation uh, County Health Rankings came out. And Ross County ranked 81st out of 88 counties in the County Health Rankings. So that means seven out of eight counties in the state of Ohio has better health outcomes than Ross County. So I think this clearly evidences the need for this health levy in these programs that we offer. I want to thank you for the opportunity to speak tonight, and I'd be happy to take any questions if you have. What are some of the mandated programs that you have? Okay. Um, our, our BCMH program with the children with med uh, medical handicaps is mandated. Uh, the VFC program, which is vaccinations for children under the age of 14. Uh, many environmental health programs our sewage treatment systems program, our private water systems program, food service operations, uh, tattoo and body art will be some of the mandated programs. Retail food establishments like your grocery stores is another food safety program that we offer. Um, some of these programs, am I correct, Ben, that if um, the mandated programs that if uh, we are not able to facilitate here in Ross County those programs. They might move them and those jobs to another area, to another county, and and regionalize them out of there. And so we would we could lose jobs. Yeah. It, also, it, it is it's a distinct possibility down the road that if we're not able to support all the mandated services, that another county could come into Ross County and offer us those services and hand us the bill. And, and we would lose local control then. And that's certainly something that we don't want to have happen. And income tax. And... Yep. Mr. Ayer, I appreciate you coming in this evening. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for the uh, opportunity. By all means, uh, very worthwhile services that you do to us here in the community.